Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind, where we get real world insights on winning from people who have accomplished amazing things. I'm your host, Larry Wydell, and let's get going. I'm here with Patty Schechter. She is the highest paid female in her company. It's a New York Stock Exchange organization, 130,000 people, and the number one earning female is Patty Schechter. So Patty, congratulations. And, uh, uh, you know, we could put a, put a lot of other, uh, you've got 13 other million dollar earners on, on your team. And, uh, uh, you know, you've had a lot of success for a long period of time. But when we were talking earlier, uh, you brought up the, the thing about having the conversation you never wanted you never wanted to have. And you did that in advance because Dennis was in a cycle of a downward cycle there with the health. You had, you had basically a warning, which a lot of people don't have. And so you can't assume that you're going to have that warning, folks. And so learn from Patty because of the incredible advantage of uh, uh, having things in place, but in spite of everything you did to line up the business, to get, have a line business partnerships lined up in advance, then has had uh, good staff, strong staff. Uh, I bet there was still an unbelievable number of large number of things you couldn't plan for that, uh, that, uh, uh, shocked you you know when when they went after the event happened absolutely one uh, well i'll be honest with you and tell you one of the things that shocked me was me um yeah. i was real strong through the whole thing he had been sick for about eight months and so when he finally did pass away it's almost a relief i'll be honest about right it. yeah the guy who was so sick you know no. and um you know, I buried him and I, and I, I thought, you know, I thought about what I had and where, and what I was going to do. And I thought I had it all together. And then I found out I didn't have it all together. Right. You don't really know how you're going to react in certain situations. And I just, um, I don't want to say I fell apart, but I, I, I lost myself for a while. And, um, how did you lose yourself? How, you know, cause uh, you know, the thing is emotional intelligence and being able to keep your wits about you in the terrible that is a great phrase but uh uh learning to live through those things that can be nightmares you know and so how did you what was the shocking thing about that for you is the fact the questions that came out the doubts that you had about yourself uh, uh, um, i think more than that uh, well not more than that but aside from that i, I always you know everybody has self-doubts I, I don't believe people who say they don't I mean, do. right it's normal it's, it's natural but um I, I always was able to like get past that and go forward and i'm a person of action um i i just i'm a doer I, i'm like i'm just full of energy i'm one of those right things, always been that kind of a, but yeah. I, I think what, what shocked me is i i became paralyzed i i didn't know what to do i even though i had a plan you know i thought i had a plan I didn't do any, I just became paralyzed. And everybody said, well, of course, you know, look what you just went through. And then of course my dad uh, passed away shortly thereafter. And then my mom, I'm an only child. So taking care of all of that and selling this big gigundo house that we all lived in. So that kind of took me, my daughter at the time was eight, nine years old at the time. But then even after that, I got all that stuff done, all the physical things that I had to get, do, had, had to get done. Uh, I just, I was stuck. I didn't know where else to go. Um, at the time I had taken kind of a sabbatical from the company. Um, I had backed myself right. off. I wasn't doing any meetings or speeches or anything. It was just kind of you know, right. on its own. And um, I wasn't sure I wanted to jump back into that. I wanted to raise my daughter and do that. But what else did I want to do? I don't know. And um, I just, I just became paralyzed. And in well, I think pa pa Patty, one thing to recognize from that is for people in advance of this happening, Lord, you know, I, hopefully it won't happen to any of us, but when these things happen, it does help for you to hear in advance that you're thrown into situations where you're responsible. And as the tragedy happens, 
you're thrown into things where you're working day and night, coming up with stuff to solve problems, look out for people, come up with solutions, find doctors, get this, that, and the other. But then when the, you go through the trauma, right, then right. you got to take care of all of that. And pretty much you're being jerked around. You're on autopilot, you know, yeah. and you, you get, th you're getting through it, but on one level, but you know, your brain and your emotions and your body is uh, they're They're basically in a reptilian shutdown uh, autopilot mode. And as that you start to come back, the pressure comes off, you know, the circumstances put you in a vice grip where you got to do this, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that. And then you got to do that next week. And then the week after, but then after extended period of time like that, as the pressure comes off, you know, that doesn't compel you. And then what's really inside you has a chance to come out. And so don't be uh, upset with yourself. Would you, would you say that let, let your body recover and your mind go through those things. Don't be hard on yourself and down, get down on yourself because you're, you know, accept the fact you're, you know, you're, you're healing. It's going to take what it takes. And would you, would you say that's accurate? I, I, that's accurate. And I wish I had thought that at the time because I didn't. And actually, although there was so much pressure, like you said, when he was sick, getting the doctors in order and doing that and taking my, you know, taking care of my daughter, taking care of the office. Um, at the mean, in, in the meantime, unbelievably, right before he got sick, we had started this unbelievable construction and, and, um, um, remodeling on our our house and it was ripped apart I had right up every day I had that I had my two infirmed parents in the guest house on my front so it's to say it was a crazy time where I was pushed and pulled and yeah constantly doing things with pressure on me but then after all of that and then he passes and my parents pass and going through all that getting rid of their stuff and getting the house together selling the house this big giant house my parents stuff my stuff all of that turmoil taking care of the kid the whole nine yards but then, Larry, there's a different kind of pressure because now there's nothing on me. I have nothing right. to do. Oh yeah. my God, now what? Now there's a pressure to like, now Now what do I do? You know, right. okay, I'm going to raise my child. But what does that mean when she's in school for eight hours a day? What am I doing sitting at home? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was another, you know, that was that was a, a shocking time for me. I, I, didn't, I didn't expect to come, be at that point. And there I was. And I didn't know what to do. I was pretty much paralyzed, like I said. And I... I actually thought of doing something else outside of the business I was in. And then a couple of friends got a hold of me and said, that's pretty stupid. You, you own this big giant business and this is where your life is. And, and you can so easily just segue right back into that. So yeah. it took me a while. I'm going to tell you the truth. It took me a while. Took me was that a bad thing? Was that a bad thing? Uh, yes and no. It was. Could you have speeded it up? Could you have speeded it up? Yes, I could have. And I wish I had condensed my time frames and listened to myself. Right. But like I said, I was, I was a little emotionally stuck. Um, and, um, but, but the good part about it is I learned a lot about myself and, um, it kind of reinforced actually who I really am because the, who I really am did finally come out and grab a hold of me and shake me and say, okay, not stop this and go do something. And sure. that's, that's what I did. And so, um, when my daughter got into high school and was, was older and didn't need me as much, um, I just got started slowly getting back into the company and into the business. And I find myself now in my favorite position of my life. I'm, you know, I'm going to be 68 years old in June, June 30th. Congratulations. And, and here I am at, at, I'm at my favorite time of life because I'm reaping the benefits of all that hard work and the, the you know, condensing of time frames, and even reaping the benefit of that stagnant period uh, because I learned a lot about myself and putting it all to work and now living my best life. You know, I, I don't kill myself. I don't pressure myself, but I do make sure that I'm involved and um, I interact and I'm involved in the company and I, I love people and I love to be on the stage and I love to um, share my, my experiences and my story because I think it's a unique one. And I think there are insights that can help other people. And I love to do that. And at the same time, you know, I love to live my life and, um, I am. I love to travel. I'm doing all that. And so it's, it's a benefit. You know, people don't realize when they're in the middle of that 
grind and they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel and they're just putting in those 18 hour days and putting in that sweat equity, which you have to do because the money doesn't fall from the sky, right? Yeah. But um, boy, if you do it and you do it right and you do it as fast as you can, then I had the luxury of being stagnant, you know? Like if I had to get my butt out of work every more, I wouldn't have been able to be in that position and just take my time and kind of mentally and emotionally heal and uh, from, from the, you know, I, I, I took a loop. Well, you know? what, we're, what, what you're saying and what I would encourage people to how, look at this when you say about compressed time frames, we know problems are coming down the road for us because they always come to everybody. And they may be mild, they may be severe, they may be health, financial, kids, uh, you know, because again, we're fragile bodies, we don't last forever. And so sooner or later, it's going to be health. And uh, so uh, you look at that and you say, if I'm working now, the reason to work is not because I have to, but race to get ahead, compress time frames, because you know you're going to need resources and time in the future that you'll be able to get by if you, you know, you're, you know, you're broke and you don't have much money and you've got to have a job and all, you know, you, somehow you can schlep through people do all the time, but it's going to be so much easier for you. And you're going to be able to be so much more help to the people around you. And if uh, you know, like we all have, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, parents that are in the hospital, they're in surgery here, and then, you know, things like that. And if you're able to do the extras, even if it's an extra, just be able to take the time off and go visit them, you know, or to send them a little care package or something like that. Well, you're not going to do that if you're, you're uh, you know, hand to mouth. And so the reason to accelerate and condense this thing, compress the time frames and the activity is get ahead of the game and create, even though you, you there's no way of avoiding the emotional uh, uh, price of going through what you did, like losing in uh, 18 months, you know, all the, the key people around you, uh, you were able to deal with it. You're able to get, get resources and uh, you're able to make things easier for them, you know, uh, so that's one thing that people can uh, take away from this. And because, you know, this is about winning and winning is over your whole life. And the thing is, you've come through this thing and you've been able to, you know, win, at, you know, in the early years, you had to work like a dog, but you built an incredible business, incredible life, went through the incredible, you know, destructive uh, uh, collapse of your whole world and your key people around you, which is probably the worst thing to deal with in life. But now you've been able to bounce, come out of that and reconstruct a life. You're, uh, you've remarried and you've been wise in your choice there too. And talk about what you've got going on right now. Well, yes, I remarried. Um, quick, crazy story. Um, after Dennis passed away. Um, I was in the grocery store, ran into a, 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 an acquaintance, not even a good friend. And uh, we just started to talk and she's like, you know, I heard your husband died. I'm so sorry, blah, blah. She said, are you interested in dating? Because I know this fellow who lives in town and he just walked and he asked me if I knew any nice women. And I thought of you, I think you two would be great together. Make a long story short, we got fixed up on a blind date. And on our blind date, we realized that he and I had had a date when I was 18 and he's nine years older than I, when he was wow. back wow. in Paris, New Jersey. And here we are living two miles away from each other uh, in Mendham, New Jersey, you know? So, and that's Dan. So I, I met him three, three or four months after Dennis passed away. I get fixed up on a blind date with this guy. And here, and here I am. I knew him from when, in 19, from when I was 18 years old and here we are married. So yeah, um, he owns, he owns a, an incredible business, self-made, um, came out of the Marine Corps. He, he, I wish he were here actually adding his two cents because he has an incredible, incredible work ethic and an incredible story. Um, came out of the, uh, came out of high school in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, same thing, you know, uh, it, it, parents who, you know, middle-class parents, his father was a train conductor. His mother was a, a housewife. 
and he joined the Marine Corps when he was right from the day out of high school into the Marine Corps. And um, he was a sniper in the Marine Corps in Vietnam. Wow. He, yeah. So tough guy. Men and then he came out of that, built a business. And you say now he's got you. You've got your own yacht and you're getting ready to go to the Caribbean, uh, uh, Dominican. And you, you that, built, a, built a big business, self-made and um, is the most mentally tough human being I've ever met in my life. You know, if it's cold out, I say, aren't you cold? And he says, just don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of his philosophy. I'm right. Like, it really worked for me. But yeah, built a big business, um, you know, um, uh, the jets and the yachts and all that. It's very lovely, um, but but it's all, um, it's icing on the cake because he's an awesome human being and we get along really well. He makes me laugh every day of my life, like hysterical cry laugh, right. just like two kids in high school. And that's what it's about, Larry. You know, yes, you want to be successful um, financially. And that's probably what people think we're talking about. But um, you want to be successful in, in life. You want to have a good life because, God, it goes so quick. It sounds like such a cliche, but I watched my husband you know, I, I only had 20, 24 years with him and I've already got 20 years with Dan. I'm like, wow, cow. like, holy cow, that 24 years was nothing. You know, well, the thing is, Patty, we're talking about winning. And the reason I wanted to do this is like winning in life it, to me, you know, people say, what is winning? Winning is being able to know how to evaluate what happens to you in life, you know, being willing to work you know, wanting, you know, have being clear on what you want and freeing yourself up to go for great things. You know, I believe, uh, you know, I believe that the desire to do something great with your life is put in there by God, you know, myself, you know, you see a kid, you know, a kid wants to do great things. He wants to run fast, wants to climb to the top of the bar. You know, you st I always love it when you get a little toddler, you can just stand up and you put them on uh, uh, next to a fireplace or stairs. And the first thing they do is want to hike their leg up. You know, they want to move up. And, you know, that's inbred in us, but it's beat out of us by people that are dead, dull, disillusioned with their life. And they're going to try and kill it in our life. And they make you feel like you're wrong to put an extraordinary amount of time into some special project or something, you know, and, you know, there's going to be plenty of critics for you anytime you uh, uh, do anything great. And uh, you'll appreciate this. I was out in uh, California with a group of senior, you know, at 200 senior leaders, and they were the movers and shakers of that uh, side of the country. And I said, how many of y'all feel like you've really done something great? in your career. And, you know, about two thirds of the room raised their hand. And I said, tell me this, what did your family and friends tell you about that? When that happened, when you did that, got a big paycheck, got a promotion, built a, you know, your own outlet and, and had your, you know, got things going in, in your, your, your new uh, uh, project and everything. I said, what did they say? Universal. They all said, slow down. You're selling your soul for success. Uh, uh, you know, think about your kids, you know, especially the wives that are trying to help or the husbands are trying to help the wives, you know, if we're to make it a joint project. It's like trying to make them guilty about the kids and, or any way they make them feel it's slow. When's enough is enough, you know? And uh, if you go, you want to go out there on this, and do anything great. If you want to be a great ballerina or whatever, people, you're just going to get abuse. And so the thing is, it's worth it. It's going to be beyond worth it. Allow yourself to pay the price and realize when things go down the toilet, like for you, everybody around you uh, died, you know? You can, when you go through the, even when you're paralyzed and you're shocked and it seems like you've lost everything, once you start moving forward, right. allow yourself to move forward, you're going to be making good choices again, just like you made up to that point. You know, one of my heroes is this Michaela Schiffer, and she's like mid-20s. She's the greatest ski racer of all time. And uh, she just went through a big thing at the, uh, her first disaster was at the Tokyo Olympics. But then she came back two weeks later and just won everything and crushed everybody. But this young girl, like two, three years ago, she builds her dream house. Uh, again, she's young and she builds it out in Eagle, Colorado, 
one of the McMansions, you know, 20 million or whatever. Her father's up on the roof when they move in. And the father, for some reason, he's up there. It's stupid. He's up there getting ice off the roof. You know, it's like, dad, call somebody to do this. Don't get on a ladder. And sure enough, he loses his balance, falls backward, cracks his head on the brick, and she moves into her dream home. She's got success all over the world. And then her dad's dead. And, uh, you know, what do you do? But your things happen to us in life. You can't predict that. But, you know, she went out the next year and won like 20 or 30 races. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's the alternative? Isn't that the better, you know, when something like that bad happens, what's the alternative? Don't do anything and ruin the rest of your life or say, you right. know, I'm going to use this as a stepping stone to greatness. I'm going to use this, this, this learning experience, this sad thing that happened to me as a springboard to do something great and say, I'm going to do this for my dad. I, can I, Larry, one of the reasons I stay in this business, one of the reasons I didn't change my name is because I, I want Dennis, like I, I use, you know, uh, he, he, he paid the ultimate, you know, he's the one who, who, who really built this thing. We built it together, but you know, it was basically him. Um, and, um, I want, I want to keep his name alive in this industry. I want people to know who Dennis Schechter was and what he built and right. what he did for people and how yeah. because of, of his work ethic and what he put into this in the beginning. Yeah. You know, we have over 16,000 ages and, and how many families have they touched? And that's a legacy. So yeah, when something right. like that happens, look, you know, that's how I try and look at it and say, okay, well, what can I use this? How can I make this a legacy moment or, or a learning moment or, you know, a spectacular advancement from this terrible trauma that happened to, to, to me, you know? And like I said, I got stuck and I got paralyzed, but when I got out of it, um, it took me a couple of years. Uh, I sure as heck, you know, shook it off and went ahead and, and, and I've tried at least to do that. But, you know, you're talking about people, um, when you, you, you ask people, what did everybody say? And invariably they said, right. slow down. And, um, I, I thought a lot about, you know, when you, when you get successful, how you lose friends and relatives. Right. And I've thought about like, why is that, you know? And, and, and the, the first, your first reaction, your first thought process, at least mine is always, well, they're jealous. And, and uh, obviously there's, there's a, a portion of that they are jealous. But I think the real reason is, is because, you know, you're like them. So, you know, if you have a cousin, you grew up with your cousin, you're, you're just like your cousin. And what you're doing is you're holding up a mirror to that person. Right. Age, right. And you're saying, okay, well, we're the same and we came from the same and we've had the same opportunities in life. And, but look what I'm doing. And so it's a mirror and, and they really, it's, it's an internal, just, they, they're, they're mad at themselves. But right. They, so they got it, you know, they just, they just project it out onto you, but it's really a self-loathing and a self-hatred that, you know, why am I not doing it? Why am I not? And, and it's funny how some people you could, you know, ask them and beg them and leave them to water and, and they just won't, they won't do yeah. it. Others jump at it and you never know who those people are. Absolutely. Fantastic uh, insights and encouragement on being able to think your way through these things that happen to you, be able to stay on track, get back on track, get momentum back and start moving again towards the kind of life you want that you know is possible that can get you excited again. That wraps up this episode. Consider leaving a rating and review if you like what you heard. In addition, I have a free video for you and it contains my best insights from 20 years of running my own business and also coaching million dollar earners. You'll find it at whiteellonwinning.com forward slash webinar. Thanks for listening and do it big.